Kevin Kapaka, director of Dawn Breaks Behind the Eyes, welcome to Fright Fest. Yeah, thank you for having me. How has your weekend been so far? Oh, it's, it's been quite exciting. It's, I mean, it's exciting to be at a film festival in general, but also uh, after these times. And yeah, it's, it was really cool to meet a lot of people and to, to see firsthand the ex kind of how people react to the film. Because quite often um, when I'm doing the Fright Fest TV interviews, mm. I'm interviewing the talent before the film. Your film actually played, what was it, two days ago? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, how has been the reaction? What have people said to you? What, what's been the, the feedback? Oh, it's been good. I mean, a lot of people were, uh, they, they came up to me and, and commented on the soundtrack, but also on like a certain scene in the film that was commented on a lot, uh, like a kind of a gory scene, mm -hmm. which was quite fun. And so, and yeah, and I'm here with one of the actors, so it was also for him quite fun to, to be recognized. And, oh, you're the guy that gets his, you know, ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, no, it's been, it's been quite a bit exciting. Uh, so how was it seeing it on the IMAX? Screen. Oh, it was yeah. It was it's <laughs> crazy to see it on on a big screen, and then you kind of notice some small things you didn't notice during the edit, uh, and and it was fun. For I kept wondering for for the subtitles because when you read the subtitles, you actually have to look down, and then you have to look back up yes. again. So, but I, I think people didn't have a problem with it. I mean, there were some films with subtitles as well. So, now this is obviously going to be going out um, on the internet for the Fright Fest folks and and um, viewers, general viewers. So this is probably the most difficult film for you to talk about or us to talk about <laughs> without spoiling it because a lot of people who are watching this won't have seen the film yet because the mm. film's obviously just had its world premiere. Um, so how can you, and if you can't, please mm -hmm. say so, how would you describe the film? Um, I think at its heart it's kind of yeah, a 70s set, 60s, 70s gothic horror story that tells the story of a relationship in an uh, unexpected way. Perfect. You've rehearsed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen the film multiple times and I watched it again the other morning with you. We, we sat and watched it mm. together. There's, it's so perfectly tuned and thought out. Right from the very first minute, there's hints, there's clues to what is to come. Mm -hmm. It must have taken a lot of preparation for that. Oh, it did, yeah. But the, the script, I mean, it was rewritten a lot in the edit as well. So we, we kind of did some reshoots and so it kind of breeded and evolved uh, over the three years, actually, uh, it took to, to finish it. Mm. So it was kind of fun to, once you have the, the main structure, you can always rework like little hints and, and kind of more parallels between the different layers that are presented in the film. And the production design is astonishing, isn't it, across all the different eras. Again, that's not an easy thing to achieve, is it? Because every frame, every uh, inch of the frame is, film, uh, is filled with stuff, mm -hmm. things which you could easily have screwed up because of the modern things. So that must have been tough. Yeah. Been. Yeah, it's also interesting to see because it's a period piece and we had one scene that got deleted where the cast, um, where the people are sitting around and uh, one of them is eating a pineapple. And, and afterwards, someone told me that it's, it was a huge luxury to ha eat pineapple in Germany at the, oh. the time. So, <laughs> so that was not the reason we cut it, but it was interesting to know, that, you know, things you don't really notice. And... Uh, and for the production side, we were also quite lucky that the, the owners of the castle, they actually had a, a taste very similar to, to ours, I guess, or to the film. So they had a lot of, lot of stuff that we just found in the castle that we could use. Uh, so the where was the castle and how did you find it? Was it is there like a, 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 like a Airbnb for castles? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually from a flatmate. She knew uh, the, the person who owned the castle. So I've known about the castle for many years and uh, I always wanted to, to shoot there. So after we finished um, my last feature film, I just thought, okay, next film I really want to shoot in one location and I want to shoot and it in the castle. And whereabouts precisely was it? Was it's it? in it's Germany. It's in a little town called Lalendorf uh, in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. So it's kind of yeah, a bit out there. So it's from Berlin. It's, it was yeah, a couple of hours uh, to drive there. Fantastic. So, and what is your background, Kevin? But what have you made before? Um, I'm actually originally a painter. I studied fine art and was painting uh, up until I was 27. And then I kind of started making films more professionally. And I did a first short film called Hades, which is also kind of Jalo inspired and it was 15 minutes without dialogue. Is that available online? It's, anybody... Yeah, it's available online. Is it's, it on YouTube or is it's it? It's uh... on Vimeo. You, you can watch, yeah. Okay. It's, it's about a woman who crosses the five uh, rivers of Hades. Hades kind yeah. of, so. 
And then I did a sequel to that called Ptolemea, which is also about, uh, the, about yeah, the nine levels of hell. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of combined these two and shot some, like a lot of n new footage and I edited it into a, my first feature film, which was called um, Haga. Uh, Haga, H-A-G-A. G-A-R, yeah. Okay, H-A-G-A-R. Okay. Which means like scrawny in English, but it's the surname of the protagonist. And again, is that available online? For this one's uh, on available that? on uh, Amazon Prime. Amazon yeah. Prime, okay, Haga. On Amazon Prime. <laughs> and what's next for you? Um, I'm currently writing or developing two scripts at the same time and I'm not sure which one I would like to do. One is a bit more similar to, to Dawn mm -hmm. and the other one is uh, slightly different in tone. It's a bit more dramatic. Also both are of course like horror adjacent at least. And I think I would do this, I would prefer to do the second one. It's kind of a paranormal road trip film set in Mexico. So a good Fantastic. chance <laughs> to go to Mexico. Well, of course, you have to come back with either one of those projects. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's happening distribution-wise or festival-wise with mm -hmm. the film? What's next for you? Um, there are, I think we have like eight festivals where it's going to be shown next. Um, right. I'm not sure which I can disclose at the moment. Sure, nice, no, best to, yeah. But in the UK, it will also be shown at, uh, oh, in, yeah, at the um, IFI, the Horathon, mm -hmm. and the Fractured Vision Festival, definitely. And some others, just, yeah, in Santiago, it will be shown uh, at, at the Santiago Horror Festival at the Salem Horror Fest, yeah, and at Nightmare Horror Fest in the States. I think it's going to do really, really well because when I first saw it, as, as you know, I just fell in love with it straight away. So we wish you well. Thank oh, you thank so you. much, Kevin. Yeah, thank you for having me and also for taking the risk with this type of film to, to show it at the festival. No problem. Thank you very much.